morning everyone. Just going to pray. Father, we just come this morning. We bless everyone this morning also. And we speak life and wholeness and fullness. <coughs> Excuse me. And we, Father, we also pull down all strongholds. Father, open our hearts and our minds and our ears, Father, this morning. And we say this often, as lately. Father, we just pray that you give us open mindness, like the Bereans, that we might be able to hear your word and receive your revelation word. And we th- thank you for this. And Jesus could say, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Just want to pray the spirit of the Lord's upon me is now to be the preacher and thank you for it. <coughs> Morning everyone. You know, I think I roughly t- I forget what we said, godly virtues or something. You know us here um, it's very hard to um, I'm, lo- I'm looking back at my own life this morning and different things, a wee thing. Uh, my granddaughter's coming up to fourteen and uh, she I have a son that was not well years ago and it was through the, it was through wee Hannah that she was able to break down the big heart of exterior of William and the problem and condition he had. And you know this here, in my own life, I never really say very much in my early life and things. At the age of five to twelve, I was in six children's homes. But we hear this. Uh, during that... During that time, later on in life, my mum died at 82. And can I tell you this? We here, I'm going to say here, there are certain people in your life that you'll live through and you will meet and there'll be something in them people that'll be life transforming. And I honestly believe the greatest gift any of us have is a mother. The greatest gift you and I have as a mother. And you know us here, and I'm looking at my own mum and different things, and if you knew the circumstances we live through and different things, everybody would think you need to go to counsellors and different things to disease. We hear this. My mum died, and my sisters asked me to speak at the funeral. And uh, I, I read a verse in Proverbs chapter 31. And these were the virtues that I seen in my mum. Proverbs 31. And these really is who I am because of her the day. You know, Proverbs 31. And I could have said anything to my mum or go down to anything and she could have said anything to me. But you know, that's the way, that's the relationship we had. When, if you, Proverbs 31. I believe... Proverbs, I'm the wrong one, Psalms of Sorrow. Now, you'll read this wee thing here. You know, and there was 11 of us. And at times when problems were bad, you know, as here, she was the crux of the whole thing in the home. Proverbs 31, verse 10. I remember going later on in life, after the burial, I met a woman who was from Mogeshel. And she was related to me. And she was come up to me and she says to me, You know, I said, You spoke at your mother's funeral. And you know, that's here, it really changed my life. For I seen what God was wanting from me. And she had a mother, she was a mum and all. That's Proverbs 31. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her place is above rubies. The heart of her husband does safely trust in her so that he shall have no need to spoil. Then you read this, she, she, all the next verses, she, 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 every one of these verses starts, she, 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 she. See, I seen my mum rising up at half five in the morning and me getting out of school at half six, quarter to seven and a cup of tea ready and us heading out to school. But listen this here, all I'm just saying with these is God wants in us a character. Of virtues and see if you see these in people you treasure these honestly you treasure these because I tell you this these are very very rare you know I'm going to read her a couple of things here listen she lays her hand to the spindle and her hands to hold the staff she stretches out her hand to the poor 
Yes, she reaches forth her hand to the needy. Means she every other day should have baked. So she baked soda scones and different things and wheat, big wheat and scones and things. And I've seen me been told, you go down now to the neighbours and give that so and so to the so and so and so and so. And I've seen these things happening. And we hear things she told me years ago when I was wee. You remember this, a given hand always gets. A given hand always gets. And could I tell you this, I've lived through that. See if you can get someone who can release. Could I tell you this, listen to what happened in your life, a given hand always gets. And I was sitting with my mum just a year before she died and she, one night she was sitting and she says, you know, it's here, I never want it. She wasn't saved to 78. I never want it. She operated on these things, I'm telling you. And she seen she had maybe nothing for me to have a drunk a bit and things and left her no money, but she had always things in the garden or else the neighbours would come up and give her things. And that's the way it was in them days. The neighbours looked out for each other. The neighbours were there to help each other. And that's the society that we should have here on earth. Believe it or not, that's, the, that's what's missing today. It's all about me and vice versa. We hear this now. Uh... If you read, I'm going to read this. I have to read this first. Proverbs 14, verse 1. Every wise woman builds her house, but the foolish pluck it down with their own hands. So if you're wise, you're foolish. You have a spiritual, and you have carnal. And all I'm just saying to you is, here's, when you run into diffs, who do you go to to ask to the problems of things? Because I ask you a question, are you going to a wise woman or a foolish woman? Are you going to a wise man or a foolish man? And here's what I'm just trying to say to you as today. What them people who come into your life, they lay things in your life, believe it or not. And can I tell you this? I see the same, the exact same thing in the Lord. For you, know, my, my mom died, and at the end of the day, I, that's the that's the portion of scripture I spoke. And St. Proverbs 31. And the Spirit of God fell in the house. And could I tell you this? It was like the Shekinah glory just filled the place. And I went up and I spoke in church and I, sp- I started speaking the verse again. And the minister told me before I went in, he says, Don't you, you're not allowed to preach in here. That's my platform, you're not allowed to preach. And by, you st- by the way, you stick just to reading scripture, don't you say anything else. That's what she turned around and says to me, the minister. And I just says, and, says, and I says, and I'm quite witty and quick. I says, and it's great to be set free. And see this morning, it's great to be the freedom to walk in the revelation and joy of the Lord. But listen to us here. See, when I went into the church and I spoke them verses again, my big hard brothers all broke down and started crying. Could I tell you, <coughs> them, them verses remained at them. Of their mom, or mom. See, in circumstances, when you're in them circumstances, and maybe children go into homes and stuff, and vice versa, and she lost a son. My brother died at 18 years of age. And she lived through that, keeping things going. And she still kept going through. At that time, she took a mental breakdown. She lost a son. And see, we don't understand what circumstances people are going through or have lived in. Or living through. And see, when you see people coming through them situations, see, I lived and I seen all that's going on. And all I'm just saying to you is, at the end of the day, mostly what happens today when we move into situations, the situations overwhelms us. And if you if you don't if you haven't the revelation to let the Lord take time out and chill out and focus on the Lord, there's a wee thought this morning, take no thought. Take no thought for any of this. You take everything to the Lord. Take no thought for tomorrow. Take no thought, whatever the problem you have. You try and give that to the Lord. See, I'm what I'm trying to say this morning, I've lived this, and I am living this. But here's the key I found out. You start, start to see things in other people, and there's little wee traits, traits of things you can see, and you can see, like, you know, I come down every... Friday, seeing a Friday night here, I come down every night at half four. 
pray to you, I come down here after. And I go out to the caravan there and sit, maybe watch TV and do chill out and different things. And so what I'm doing is I'm sorting my mind out and getting my thoughts right for the Lord. We hear this, my granddaughter of 14 year, years of age now comes down every evening at five o'clock and she comes in there and she plays for so long. Now listen, I haven't asked her to come down. She's willing to come down. Now she's going through all the problems of a young girl at 14 years of age, puberty and different things, and school and all that stuff. But could I tell you this, I am not asking her to come down, but could I tell you this, I see something there. She's faithful and she wants to come down. Please. Nobody's forcing her to come down. But there's something there inside her wants to come down. Could I tell you that's what God's looking this morning for us? He's just looking for us to see any wee thing. If you're just in that faithfulness with that fully committed heart. And I'm just going, that's exactly the way the Lord was. And that's the way the Lord, the seven eyes is the Lord's looking today. Now we've never been told this. Now years and years ago i seen this. And i seen that the Lord was looking to see if my heart was fully committed to him. And what you're going to say here, now he became fully committed to me by the Spirit of God. And I see it before the meeting started, I asked, why did the Spirit of God, sevenfold Spirit rest in Christ? I remember what it was because his heart was fully committed. See, nobody's asking Hannah to come down here. But there must be something there that she wants to come down. Listen to us here. See them verses there. It's exactly the same as the Saviour's love. The Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, did not need to come. For he was God. But there was something there inside his heart. He says, I will go. We see this in Romans chapter 5, excuse me, verse 18. Verse 19. For us by one man's disobedience many were made sinners. That's, that's Adam. Because of Adam's dis disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one, many were made righteous. See? In heaven the Son said, I will go. And I will go and do your will. The fully committed heart was in heaven. And the sevenfold spirit rest on And if you read Psalm 40. When you really start to look at the Lord's life, you'll read and see visible virtues in his life because of the choices he made. Psalm 40. Psalm 40. Verse 6. Sacrifice and offers thou did not desire. Mine ear has thou opened. Burnt offerings and sin over and thou hast not required. God did not require sin offerings. God did not require, require sacrifices. Okay. Then said I, then, then said I, 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 lo, I come, and the volume of the book is written me, I delight to do thy will. Oh my God, yeah, thy law is on my heart. His delight was come to do, and be the one, and restore back to mankind the authority that Adam gave away, and be the perfect man. To restore mankind again and be able to usurp the authority of Satan. For Adam gave that authority away. And that's in heaven the Lord Jesus Christ fully committed and says I will come and I will go. But listen, that's why I'm just going to talk to you this morning now about a saviour's love. When I sit and think in my own life, you know, and different things, you know, and see that's, that's that him. That be so. We were singing. We speak, we bless, we pray. And see, this morning, we hear him go say here. You and I don't understand this, or maybe we've never been taught this. After you get saved, you will operate under spiritual laws. If I sow after my flesh, I will reap from my flesh corruption. 
Galatians chapter 6. He that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap. Now listen, I'm going to say here. Through my own life, I did not know that God wanted to rest on me with the sevenfold spirit. And it's the sevenfold spirit renews and changes them desires that the flesh want to take you off in them desires. That's the sevenfold spirit of God changes your desires. Right, I'm going to show you a wee thing here. Most of the things we're doing in the body of Christ is to sort out the problem instead of giving the people the cure for the problem. And we hear this. God wants to lead your life by the sevenfold spirit and the main one is the spirit of wisdom. God can't lead you by the spirit of wisdom unless you have that fully committed heart. That's a black and white this is. Now listen what I say here. Now listen, see things happen in life and for example politicians and different things and they fall. Why do they fall? Because the desires inside their, their flesh control them and they cause them to fall. Now it's not the person's fault. It's the desires inside them that have the control to do that because they're not yielded to the control of the Spirit of God which can only break them and other desires. And when we see somebody doing something wrong are we judgmentally judging them or are we realizing, oh, praying for them Father we pray that someone will come along and give them a revelation how to be controlled by the Spirit of God to break them and other desires. You can either have the desires of falling off the flesh or desires of falling off the spirit. The desires of the f- spirit will change the desires that's inside you. And that's why these people are stumbling. Because them other desires have the control. And we haven't taught them how to be fully controlled by the spirit of God. So it breaks off them desires. And we're always saying, you stop this, you stop that. They can't stop it. Because them desires are taking them and controlling them. Now what's this wee thing that I show you is uh, uh, Proverbs chapter 1. See the things I'm saying. This is the exact same things only the difference was the Lord Jesus Christ had the sevenfold spirit rest in him. And he had none of the desires of the flesh for the sevenfold spirit has his and everything before he came to earth. Uh, Proverbs chapter 1 verse 20. Go read this out of the Passion. What you and I need, four things. We need, i.e., a fully committed heart. So the sevenfold spirit will rest on us. Now, can I tell you this? We don't go say it. No one ever has ever told me that. I never heard anyone preach that. But that's a resting in Christ. That's what empowered him. In that day, when you have a fully committed heart, you will have a good heart. And what you really need is an open heart then to receive the revelation that wisdom wants to teach you. Okay then. But wisdom wants to do another thing here. And it's found in wisdom's crying since you got saved to lead your life. The wisdom of God. I'm not going over again. Remember I met the woman in Bally Castle? And Lord told me wisdom. What about all the times I'm crying to you, Wally? But I tell you, I never knew. I had fully committed to the Lord, and I never knew that wisdom wanted to lead my life. Could I tell you this morning, wisdom of God wants to lead your life. The wisdom of God can't lead your life unless you have that fully committed heart. And all these other people will take you on the other, other programs. Could I tell you, you'll not get it. Let me show you this. Proverbs 1, verse 23, Passion. And what God wants to do in your heart then is do a transformation in your heart to make it wise. Does that make sense? Proverbs chapter 1. He can't do that unless you yield and give him full control. But even up there, even when you yield, if you're still open and listen to everybody else instead of listening to the Spirit of God that he wants to lead you by, you'll not get it. That's how plain this is. I know it's black and white, but there's no grey area here. It's black and white. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 23. Passion.
come back to your senses and be restored to reality. Don't you even think about refusing my rebuke? Don't you know that I am ready to pour out my spirit of wisdom upon you? Here's what I'm trying to tell you changed my life. I got a revelation God wants to lead my life. I'd fully committed to him and God wants to lead my life by the spirit of wisdom. God wants to lead your life by the spirit of wisdom. God has been crying since the day you got saved for you to hear wisdom and let him control your life. What you see us wee bit that says in the passion here. Don't you know that I am ready to pour my spirit out of my spirit upon you and bring you to the revelation of my words? What's he going to bring you? He's going to bring you to I'm going to lift another Bible here. He's going to bring you to the revelation of God's word. That's what he wants to do. He wants to pour the spirit of wisdom on you so that you personally can understand the revelation of God's word. And maybe hold, oh, it's this wee bit, and bring you to the revelation of my words. That will make your heart wise. So if you have a fully committed heart, it's a, and it's good and it's open to listen to the spirit of God, God's going to pour the spirit of wisdom on you. We are this, and bring you to the revelation of God's word. And if you listen and follow the revelation that God shows you, that will make your heart wise. That's the only way of making it wise. That's a black and white, this is. See, see what I'm telling you? I didn't know at that time, that verse, to them played. And I started to hear Revelation. As I started to read now the Bible, I started to read Revelation. I seen things in the Bible. But I didn't realise that I had broken this spiritual law. I would stepped into this spiritual law. See, people used to think of me, who does he think he is? Does he think God speaks to him? God wants to speak to you. But we, the church, haven't told that. I'm going to show you from we I show you a couple of things I learned as I studied the word. Go you with me to Luke chapter one. And I was really in the Lord's life. So the sevenfold spirit rested in Christ. That's high eleven. And it made him of quick understanding, it says. We hear this. That same thing that operated in the Lord Jesus, the spirit of wisdom, was pouring out the revelation of God's word. And it was creating in him a wise heart. So here's the pattern I'm just want to show you. you listen, wait to show you this if I can see this. Luke chapter Luke chapter two. Matthew Mark Luke. See all these other programs? They cannot produce this. They cannot produce this. You either come this way or you can't produce this in your life. Luke chapter two. Uh, verse 40. And as I was reading the Bible, I was reading the Lord's life, and I read this one morning, Luke 2, verse 40. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom. How did he get filled with wisdom? Because the sevenfold spirit was resting on him and was pouring the spirit of wisdom on him and was causing his heart to be wise. And he kept filling him with wisdom. And the child grew and waxed strong, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Now I started to look at the Lord's life and I started to see, here's a young child, and he was growing in wisdom. But the sevenfold spirit was resting on him. And that, listen, see this morning, I was to, I told this to a man one night, and he says to me, do you think the sevenfold, the spirit, sevenfold spirit rests in Christ and only him? this is a teacher as he told me so all the ones he's teaching who do you think he's what he's what do you think he's telling them right see when you're here in Luke chapter 2 you go to verse 50 51 and 52 and during this time he the mother his earthly father took him to Jerusalem and they lost him. 
and verse 49, how is it you sought me? Wish ye not know that I must be about my father's business? What was his, what was his vision? I must be about my father's business. What age? 12, 10. See, the spirit of wisdom was an empowering him to do this. Watch this now. And he went down there with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto him. So he became obedient to his parents because he was walking in wisdom. Now that's the virtue wisdom will bring in your life. It'll bring you to subject yourself under authorities and other authorities. Right? And he went down with them and came to and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these sins in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom. What did he increase in? Wisdom and stature. Stature. And in favour with God and man. So his character and the virtue that was in his life were starting to be instilled with inside him by the sevenfold spirit. Jesus never went into the ministry for 18 years. He was 30 years of age. You read it now. He's around 12 years of age. He goes into the ministry at 30 years of age because he was led by the spirit to go in. Now, if you go to Isaiah 11, verse 1 to 5, I just want to AV, I want to show you this. Here's what we haven't been told. God wants to lead your life by the sevenfold spirit. And that is the only thing that can produce a wise heart in you by the spirit giving you the revelation of the word. And you walk in the revelation and that empowers your life for God to the spirit of wisdom to be poured out upon you. Just exactly like those. Now all these other programs that never will tell you everything else will not be just this. Uh, Isaiah 11 verse 1 And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse and a branch shall grow out of his roots and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might and spirit of knowledge and spirit of the fear of the Lord and shall make him of quick understanding that will make every believer in Christ of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord now that's what rests on Christ and all I'm saying here this morning is that's what God wants to rest on you. Second Chronicles 16 verse 9. See, I'd be wrong to tell you there's another way of doing this. This is it. Second Chronicles 16 verse 9. Go for the new level. That that's, says it fantastic in here. The eyes of the Lord, which are the seven eye, sevenfold spirit of God, search the whole earth in order to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed. That's why the sevenfold spirit rests in Christ, because his heart was fully committed. If heart, his heart wasn't fully committed, the sevenfold spirit wouldn't rest on him. And the same for you and me. And see if he can get you and me to be there. God wants to produce in you everything in your life purpose, the plan, the call, the pr- everything in your life. He can't do it in anyone, on the, another, anyone else except this person. Because they're not fully committed. But this, and you, you will maybe follow programs and you will do this, but you'll find out the desires of the flesh, if they're not under the control of the Spirit of God, might raise you up, but maybe pride comes before a fall and all of a sudden you're fallen. But all I'm just saying to you is there's, there's the process of how for you to be, make your heart wise. It's not as if here's a ten point plan. No, here is the way the Lord lived and here's the plan for each one of us. Now he comes along and he says this. And John, I'll read John 8 for I didn't read it in Friday night, but John 8 verse 12. Now you hear understand, I, all I'm just trying to tell you what happened in my life I fully committed to everything. The Lord started to show me revelation, but I did not know the spirit of wisdom had been poured out on me. To two or three or four years later. And I started to see things. And all I tried to do was walk on what God showed me. Right, says John 8 verse 12. This is a totally different message now what the church is telling everybody. John 8 verse 12 I am the light of the world Jesus says 
He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness. I got a revelation. I'm going to follow the Lord. So what did I do? I became a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I started to follow him. Now that's what I'm saying here. We hear him going to say, I'm not going to tell anybody. That's, that's the start of the whole row. Good job, Lord, you're not asking me to pre- preach this. I'm just going to follow this. And all I started to do was follow the Lord. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk. By the way, it didn't go down too well with my wife. And by the way, it didn't go down too well with my Christian relatives who went to other churches. But here's the key. I got a revelation. I'm going to follow the revelation the Lord shows me. I'm going to follow the Lord. Listen to this verse again. I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness. What will happen if you follow the Lord? You will never walk in darkness. But you shall have the light of life. I've seen from Scripture that the Lord wanted me to be a follower. And see, today all I'm just trying to tell you is God wants you to be fully committed. God wants your heart good, open to listen to him, his voice, his leading. Then he can make your heart wise. Then you will not walk in darkness. That's pretty black and white there. But that's a, that's a, believe me, that's a symbol this is. And the spirit of wisdom that rests on Christ and rests in all his true servants will lead and guide you the rest of your life. And the problem is our heart's not open because we're listening to too many other people and other things. Oh, but look how many numbers they're getting. Look what they're doing this. Look what they're doing this. You don't really see. Take no thought what everybody else is doing. Follow the Lord. And see this morning... Wait till you this. Why is this wee thing? Now, go with me. Matthew 4, verse 19, in case someone who heard this before. Matthew 4, verse 19. I remember one time a person come here and go home to her husband. Ah, that's far too simple. Heard all that before. Has it? Who are you, you following today? Jesus always meant you to follow him. And you're only a disciple of the Lord if you're following him. And see this morning, you know, when I sit and think on my own life and my mum and situation and her problems and all, I look back and there was things instilled in me as I followed in my life. And everybody says, so you're still doing what such and such is doing, such and such, for their traits. And see, when you start to follow the Lord, then virtues and things will come in your life. And people will see them. By the way, you will attract others to them then. Um, Matthew 4 verse 19 Jesus comes along and he says follow me and I will make you fishers of men what have you to do? follow what will he do? I will make you I have to do something no no follow me and, and he will make you could I tell you oh, but so and so says such and such well then you may go and follow him then but listen, what I'm trying to tell you is wisdom is going to pour itself in you, cause you to have a wise heart, and God will take you right through, and you will walk in the revelation of God's light. Right, okay then. You'll maybe hear this voice then, if you're starting the revelation of following the Lord. Now you're following me. I want you to serve me. Who are you serving this morning? See, I tell you this morning, a lot of people start and saying, Whose authority are you under? Could I tell you, I'm under the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because I heard his voice. And I'm just fully and trying to do. Uh, Will you see this now? Uh, John chapter 12. See, if you, I was saying on Friday night, the, fa- the Lord Jesus came down on earth to do one thing. The Father's, I read it earlier on there. But let me show you this. John 8 verse 28, and then I'll go to John 12 verse 26. John 8. Then Jesus said to his disciples, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you shall know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself. The Lord Jesus done nothing of himself. But as the Father has taught me, I speak these things. The Father taught him, and all he done was follow and speak what the Father told him. 
See, the same way the revelation of God shows you the revelation of the word. You speak and confess the revelation of God's word. Watch this now. John 12, verse 26. See, when you're there, just go to John 12, verse 49, and go to 26. Right. John 12, verse 49. For I have not spoken of myself. See, here's the key. When God starts to give you revelation, just you raise up and speak the revelation of what God says, the word. Add nothing to it. Here's what God says. John 12, verse 49. I have, no, I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me. So the Father sent, has sent ones, and I was saying Friday night, all our job to do is believe in the sent ones. And here's what we're doing. We're believing in ones who have, the Father hasn't sent, but are building programs and building numbers. Please. John 12, verse 49. I have not spoken to myself, but the Father has sent me. He gave me a command which I should say and what I should speak. See, once you get the revelation of God's word, I'm going to show you a couple of revelations in a minute or two. I never learned that. The Lord showed me this. What's this wee verse? For I know that his command is everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, as the Father has said unto me, I speak. God will reveal the revelation of the word to you. And see, the revelation of the word he reveals to you will be 100% truth. And all you have to do is to renew your mind with the word and speak what the revelation of the word says. And as you speak that, God gives you more. But like this. Uh, all right, okay. John 12, verse 26. I'm nearly going to go by this one. John 12, verse 26. So, you maybe have got the stage now, you've fully committed, seven four spirits committed to you, you start to hear the spirit of wisdom, your start, heart's, heart's starting to get wise, you're fully in the light, what's this? If any man serve me, so God's calling you to serve him now. By the way, it says serve me, the Lord Jesus. Let him follow me, and where I am there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honour. What will happen if you follow the Lord and you serve the Lord? What's going to happen to you? Your Father's going to honour you. i seen that years ago. So if I follow the Lord and I serve the Lord, the Father's going to honour me someday. You know what I started to see? I didn't seek men's honour. I started to seek only God's honour. John 5 verse 41 and how, how I know all these things, these truths were revealed to me. And I, when you have a revelation of something, you never forget it if you walk in it. John 5, verse 41. I received no honour from men. The Lord Jesus received no honour. Here's a virtue the Lord had. He didn't receive honour from men. John 5, verse 41. If you receive the honour of men, could I tell you, yes, you will not get the Father's honour. John 5 verse 41. I'm going to go to John 5 verse 44. How can you believe when you receive honour one of another? See, they were looking for honour. Everybody's looking honour and people to honour and bless them. No, no, no. You should be just following the Lord, serve the Lord, and you let the Father's honour come into your life. For the, If you're seeking honour from men or women, can I tell you, you're going to stop the Father's honour coming into your life. John 5 verse 45. How can you believe? When you receive one of another, and seek not the honour that cometh from God only. See, the Bible teaches us, seek ye first the kingdom. There's a seek there to seek the Father's honour. Only. Now, you're stepping up, you're starting to be in the virtues the Lord Jesus Christ had in his life. As you're following the Lord. And by the way, you're setting yourself as a pioneer for others to follow. So that's what we're doing today. We're following the Lord. And he went front. And we're following him. Paul done the exact same thing. He followed the Lord. Follow me as I follow Christ. But listen, here's the key where all this is. That's what God wants to instill in each one of us. And that pattern there is all there. What's this? If I can just show you a wee bit more. Just what twenty past to have. 
And I, I went over quite a number of them things before. But here's the key. Wait, I show, wait, I try and show you this wee thing. Here's Follow Me, Seek Me, right? Watch this. John, I read it on Friday night. I haven't spoke on it for a long, long time. John, Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7. I was talking about John the Baptist. John the Baptist was God's messenger. John the Baptist was God's sent one. John the Baptist, if you brought him in the day, most people wouldn't even allow him onto the platform. Because he lived in the wilderness. And he probably now hadn't shaved or nothing. And goodness knows what he looked like. But God calls him my servant. Now, for you to get that, go you to John 1 verse 6. But I'm going back to Luke 7. John 1 verse 6. So God has set in the body of Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ has been given delegate authority. And God now gives authority to his son to appoint servants. But this was John's, this was God's servant here, John, before the Lord came along. John 1 verse 6. And there was a man sent from God. Here's a sent one from God. You get that now? Now, there's a powerful truth in here. In John chapter 6 verse 29 and 30. And John was sent into the wilderness with the baptism of repentance for Israel. The Messiah is coming. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. And all they had to do was get baptised because the messenger told them to get baptised. Uh, and all the people that heard him and the publicans justified God. What did they do? Did you know you can justify God today? How? By believing in the true servant. I'll read this again. And all the things that all the people that heard him and the publicans justified God being baptised with the baptism of John. But we hear this. But the Pharisees and lawyers rejected the counsel of God. What did they do? The Pharisees and lawyers, what did they do? Rejected God's counsel. So when you believe in God's servant, you are believing in God's counsel. See, today, if you only realise this, the majority of people in the body of Christ do not believe in the apostle, the sent one. So they are rejecting God's counsel. And they are not justifying God. And that's why the body of Christ is in the mess of sin. But the Pharisees and the lawyers rejected the counsel of God against themselves. So they reject the counsel of God against themselves. Now could I tell you this? If you go to all the great scholars, not very many of them will believe in apostles today. But all I'm just saying to you is, I seen that verse one night the Lord showed me. Listen, what did these people do? They believed God's messenger and they justified God and they received God's counsel. I speak on a Friday night about this. Me here I'm going to say, do not reject God's counsel. Because you know why? That's you not having an open heart. And when you haven't an open heart, you stop the revelation of spirit leading and guiding you. Okay, uh, uh, John 6, verse 29 and 30. John 6. And for someone who wants to see this, John 6, verse 29 and 30. Most, a lot of people will be switched off now when I've said these things. John 6, verse 20, 29 and 30. Right, sorry, 28 and 29. Then said he unto them, What shall we do that we may work the works of God? They, Jesus answered and said, This is the work of God that you believe on whom he has sent. What's the work of God? You believe on his sent messengers. Now that's what's happened to the body of Christ. We have rejected the sent ones. And now we've built all these other programs. And we're not, we have rejected God's counsel. But here's what I'm trying to say this morning. The secret the whole thing is you get a revelation. You follow the Lord. You serve the Lord. And you start to get a revelation of serving his true servants. No, no, not serving them. You look at the true servants and receive them. And can I tell you, so you've set yourself off. And you're starting to justify God. And by the way, you're here, going to hear God's counsel. 
For if you reject God's messengers, you stop to hear. Even though your heart's right, you reject. You stop to hear God's message. Right? Mark 4. Don't want to go on too much, but listen. You have no idea the poor critters out there. They never really mature from that childlike state. And they go out and they serve. And they burn out. And then they're not under the control of the Spirit of God, so the flesh is controlling them. And then they do things, and all of a sudden the church wipes their hands in. And that's what we're doing. But listen, Mark chapter 4. We pray for everyone tonight that the Lord would open our hearts to see these truths. Mark chapter 4. Now listen, I'm going to read the parable that I'm... This is the passion. Just want to read that and then I want to read it. Right. <clears throat> God wants to lead your life. Fully come in at heart. Wisdom of God's leading you. You start to produce this in you. Now God's going to show you the scripture. Whatever you do, walk in that revelation. For if you don't walk in it, you lose the revelation God shows you. And this is me. And I didn't know the spirit of wisdom was there. But listen to this here. Listen, I read this verse 24. Right. No. Mm -hmm. right. Give me a second to just get it. Right, that's verse 25. For those who listen with open hearts will receive more revelation. But those who don't listen with open hearts will lose what little they think they have. And all I, I started to go, and the Lord opened up a door for me to go and speak. And all I done was spoke the, spoke the revelation the Lord showed me. And we here, I'm going to say here, and I told everybody, the Lord showed me a revelation how to speak. And everybody said, how did you learn that? Who showed you that? And I go home, and all of a sudden, anyway, think of me, I go home, and all of a sudden, I try to go to sleep, and all of a sudden, I download a whole pile more stuff for a couple of hours. And then the Lord opened another door, and I go and speak that. What did I do? I walked in the revelation God was showing me. And that's what I told him. Just walk on what God shows you. And God will look, supernaturally open a door, up a door for you to speak. You speak what God's showing you. Never, ever stop speaking the revelation he shows you. That's you stepping into a place where the wisdom of God will lead your life. See, see some of our versions. New 11, Mark 4. You would no one's here. Nobody ever read them verses what I'm showing you there to me. And I says, nobody ever told me, Lord, you wanted me to lead me by revelation. I spoke this 15 years ago. And all I done was walk to what God showed me. And see, today, that's all I'm doing. And I showed you how I tapped into this. I've been fully committed. Sevenfold spirit resting on me. And I started to see the spirit of wisdom and my heart the Lord started to produce a wise heart in me and it was through these truths I'm showing you but Mark 4 verse 24 New 11 pay close attention to what you hear the closer you listen the more understanding you will be given and you will receive even more to those who listen to my teaching more understanding be given but for those who are not listening, even a little understanding they have will be taken away. So listen, God wants to pour the revelation of his word out to you. Now he wants you to be faithful what he shows you and walk in that truth and leave everybody else. Pray for them. Bless them. But you walk in that truth that God shows you. And by the way, you're going to get more revelation and you're going to see more things. And that's what's happened. God wants to instill that into your life. But listen. But I tell you this, that's all I'm doing. I don't reject God's counsel. I don't reject God's revelation. I believe in sent ones. But listen, when the Lord shows you something that's different than everybody else tells you, go, I'll go to you another wee verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. See, they even come along to Jesus and Paul said, Who taught these men? Spirit of God. 
First Corinthians chapter two. I'll go to the NIV just to show you this. And then I'll maybe stop early and pray. First Corinthians chapter two. Paul came along and he started to speak a thing called the wisdom of God. And there's another wisdom in the world that's called the wisdom of this world. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6, the revelations that God shows you, you will speak these revelations and you will be speaking the wisdom of God in a revelation mystery. But I just want to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse maybe 10 to 13 first. And then I'll go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. See outside of here, I never speak this stuff earlier. God has supernaturally opened a door for to speak. I speak God's word. And I speak to like-minded believers in here. And I don't go outside. First Corinthians chapter 2. Verse 10. I read 9. How be it, as it is written, No eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor mind conceived, what God's prepared for those who love him. We ask you a bit. But God has revealed them unto us by his Spirit. What has God done? He's revealed it for those who are fully committed. Sevenfold spirits operating. But God has revealed it to us by his Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. This is First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10 to 13 in the NIV. But God has revealed it to us by the Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For who among men know the thoughts of a man except the man's spirit within him? And by the way, you've got a God spirit in you. In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. We have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that, that we may understand what God has freely given us. This is what we speak. See, here's the church has got along. You take the word of God and you speak it. That's not spiritual. That's not spiritual words. What God reveals to you by the Spirit, you speak that. That's spiritual words. The other's not spiritual words. See, ma, we the world always try to counterfeit the true, real thing. I read this again. I seen this at half four in the morning years and years ago, and we have. My wife was lying beside me, and we have a wee end suite that does two rooms. And I opened the door so I didn't want to disturb her, and I opened the Bible at half four in the morning. And this is the way I was reading this. I mean, my goodness, I've never seen that before. For who among men th- knows the thoughts of a man except the man's spirit within him? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. And we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is from God that we may understand what God has freely given us. We may understand this. See, I went to a church and told me, you can't know these things. This is what we speak, the things that God reveals to you. When God reveals this by revelation, you speak that. That's coming from a, a renewed mind. You're speaking the words you end up with an established heart. I'll read this again. For who among men know the thoughts of man except the man's spirit within him? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. We have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, right? That may may understand what God has feeling. This is what we speak, not in words taught to us by human wisdom, but in words taught by the spirit. Expressing spiritual truths and spiritual words. See that night I read that. I got a revelation and I started to speak what God showed me by revelation. And I ended up getting a spiritual renewed mindset. What God shows you, you speak. Now everything else in the body of Christ is counterfeited. They'll tell you, you read the word of God and speak it. That is not spiritual truths. I'm going to finish here. I'm not trying to fall out with anyone. I'm just trying to tell you how, this is how it works. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. This message 
will always be here for everyone. Even when I go. Because I tell you, that's what transformed my life. God supernaturally doing these things and revealing these to us. And all I done was, I spoke what I seen. And that's all I'm doing. What the Lord shows me, I still speak. And I thank God the day, the way it is, there's nothing here to hinder us from doing that. I, a man asked me to go to speak at a meeting one night, and he was he that's pastor that come from a Baptist church that's coming all the time. And I turned in my system, I will speak if you allow me to speak what I believe. See, I was setting up myself that if he doesn't allow me to speak, I won't be speaking unless I speak what God shows me. I know, I know what you think of me here, but I know this. If I didn't speak what God showed me, I would lose the revelation of what God showed me. Second Corinthians 4 verse 13. I'm going to finish here. Uh, wait, see. Number three. Right. We have the spirit of faith. According as written, I believe, therefore I speak. This is the spirit of faith in action. Everybody's telling you, speak these words and have faith in them. No, here's the spirit of faith in action. I believe, therefore I speak. I believe the revelation, therefore I speak it. I'm going to speak for a wee minute a few revelations over you. Okay? Just a couple of wee things here. What's this? We here this morning. God knows where you are. God knows the situation you're in. God knows how you take you out of that situation. God knows how to sort that situation. You just tell him the situation to him. Commit and trust him with it. We have a couple of other things. I'm just going to show you here. If if you and I are not walking, here's a couple of truths I learned. Confess and repent. Lord, I'm doing this wrong. I confess this and I repent of it. Here's another one. Commit and trust. Me hear this. I start to confess now and speak what the, your word shows me, Lord, and I speak over my life. I'm just going to speak a few. Father, I acknowledge every blessing in Christ. Thy faith becomes effective by acknowledging of every good thing in Christ. Philemon verse 6. Here's the thing. Your family, I confess wholeness and fullness and blessing, even though it looks they're doing nothing wrong. Father, I just pray you bless them. Father, if they don't receive my counsel, Lord, would you send labours across the path that they receive them? Leave them there. Commit them to the Lord and leave them there. Take no thought, rest and trust God. Not easy, done, I know. We hear this, if there's a problem in your life, speak to the mountain. Mark 11, verse 23 to 25. We speak to this situation, Father. And Father, we pray that there's no unforgiveness or anything would stop the prayer, but Father, we pray the blessing of God and thank you, Father, you're dealing with this situation. We hear this verse. We know all things work for good. All things are working for my good. All things are working for my good. Do you ever sit there? All things are working for my good. And your family too. All things are working for my good. Romans 8 verse 28. Well that doesn't make sense. Hey, you're back to sense and reason again. Speak what God says. All things are working for my good. Romans 8. See this is you start to see what the word says. And you speak the word. Romans 8 verse 28. And we know all things work together. For good to them that love God. All things are working for good. Now it may not look them. Why should God bring it into place? All things are working. Wait hear this. Here's one here. Father we lift up our hands to you. Great spiritual truth. We hear this. I was at a wedding one night. I was trying to finish here. And all of a sudden I heard this. But this man wasn't, wasn't very well. And it really, I felt the Holy Spirit inside me. I don't like that word feeling, but I just knew the Lord wanted me to go and pray. The next thing, even my wife caught on to me, you better, you as well go and pray for that man. So I got outside, and all of a sudden, the wee Bible with me, I opened, I'm trying to look for this verse. Where would it be? Right, it's 1 Timothy chapter 2, maybe. Right. Verse 8. I will therefore that men pray everywhere, Lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. See, if you're coming to me to pray and you're lifting up holy hands, don't you 
have anything in your heart, bitterness, hate or anger. By the way, don't be coming down. When I just come before the Lord, I first pray and I take authority over this and I speak to this situation. Supernaturally, I got a text through that later on that night. The man was 100%. He's ready to die. He's 100%. The great spiritual truth, lift up your hands to the Lord. You might see me, I do a lot of things with my hand, but mostly when I pray, I try and lift up my hands. For I believe in that verse. Watch this, a couple of wee things here, wait see this. Oh dear, wait see this. All things are working for good. All things are ours in Christ. Okay then. Now, I've, I've covered these. Wisdom's crying tonight. He wants to lead your life. Father, we pray that the Lord would give us open ears an open understanding and Father open our minds to the spiritual truth of God's word and we hear this two other things help us Lord to be open minded and Lord help us to be open to your voice and help us to be open to your word and Father help us to be open to the cries of your people you know us here you might not realise it you might see someone and all of a sudden the Lord touches you and you just know that you know they're going through a situation. And you can feel for them and you start to cry for them. Father, pray that your will will be done. And Father, we just pray, I'm going to pray now, Father, not I, but Christ. Father, have your way in each one of us. And we commit everything to you this morning. We take authority over principalities and powers and we bind them. We command healing, wholeness and fullness. And Father, we pray for your body that they would see the virtues of the Lord Jesus Christ and how he lived as a pattern for our life and how Paul followed the pattern. And Father, we are to be followers of the pattern of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we pray for everyone in every church that the scales would move off our eyes to see the true path of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.